Hello, all you wonderful people. Welcome to the video. And in this video, I am going to talk about something which you've probably never even thought about before with regards to your recovery. There are a lot of things that get mentioned when it comes to recovery from DPDR, such as, you know, relaxation techniques, calming yourself, meditation, grounding, acceptance. And look, while some of that might be good if it's done the correct way, it might not even be one of the most important things. And actually there's one thing, well, two things that people actually really overlook when it comes to your DPDR recovery. And that is looking at your habits and looking at your lifestyle. With the people that I help with DPDR, habits and lifestyle comes up a lot. And I'm not just talking about physical habits, I'm also talking about mental habits as well. So some of the mental habits might be things like ruminating, uh, always thinking on the negative, uh, always looking at the past instead of the future, you know, um, not having like high self-esteem, sort of putting yourself down, maybe being too hard on yourself. And obviously some of the physical habits might be things like, oh, I just lay in bed for two hours every morning before I get up, or I, I know that I should exercise, but I don't. It's actually really fascinating how just looking at these things and working out why you're doing what you're doing and changing this habit makes, makes such a difference. And it makes such a difference because these habits have such a big impact on your life right now and you're so used to doing them. And look, let's be honest here, you're so good at doing them as well. So you can consider this for you right now. What are some of the bad habits that you have? Do you just eat junk food all day? Are you just in Facebook groups and watching YouTube videos all day about DPDR, knowing that it's not really helping you? Are you canceling social engagements because you're worried about what might happen or how you'll feel when you get there? Or even are you just saying to yourself things like, I'll never get better, I'll never be the same. You know, what's the point of even trying to get better because this is just too hard? What you have to sort of understand here is that all these things you're doing are habits. Your brain and you essentially get something out of it. So for example, if you're just canceling the whole time going out with your friends for fear that something might happen, even though realistically you don't know that that's going to happen, then you get that feeling of safety at home, at your home, and your brain is going to like this. So it's going to go, oh, okay, if I stay at home, I'm going to feel safe. I like this. So I'm going to do it again and again and again. And what you might not actually realize here is that the very thing which is going to potentially help you from this is to go out and hang out with these people and do all this stuff. And you might say right now, well, Dan, that's all very well and good, but I just know that I'm going to get scared. I know that I'm not going to like it. Well, that's sort of fair enough, but it's also, you know, it's, I don't think it's as black and white as that either. Because if you say to yourself, I know I'm going to get scared, I know I'm not going to like it, then that thought is in your mind and everything you see, everything you hear, everything you experience is going to filter through that thought. So even if you are having a good time there, you might actually focus on more of the negative stuff and more of the stuff that makes you feel bad and more of the stuff that fits with the narrative that you've told yourself of, I'm going to be scared and I'm not going to have fun. So you're going to be looking for ways to get scared. You're going to be looking for how scared are you? You're going to be looking at how much fun you're not having. And what really sort of needs to happen here to help you out of this is to sort of question that belief. It's, what, it's what's called a limiting belief. So it's something that you believe and it's limiting you in some way. So you need to question that limiting belief. For sure, if you do have a bit of social anxiety, then what's something that you can do to feel safe when you are out? So that way you've still got that feeling of safety, but you've also done almost seemingly the impossible of, of going out. And once, once you do have that safety with you internally, then when you do go out, you're not going to be looking for the bad stuff and you're not going to be looking for the unsafe, unsafe stuff. You're just going to be out there experiencing whatever happens. This is the power of recognizing your habits and changing habits. When it comes to recovery from DPDR, a lot of people think that there's some magic one thing that you have to do, or there's a secret ingredient, or it's just going to be so difficult to do, and it's monumentally big, and it's just going to be impossible. That's actually not the case. It's all these little things added up together. 
looking at your habits, looking at your limiting beliefs, looking at other ways that you can tackle going out or other things that might scare you, looking at your exercise, you know, meditation, writing a diary, keeping busy, like whatever it is, all this stuff combined is going to get you to where you want to get to, which is getting your life back and feeling normal and feeling excited again and having a new lease of life and being able to appreciate life and all the other cool things that, that happens with recovery from DPDR. So I do invite you to write a little list about some of the bad habits that you think you might have, whether it's a thinking habit or a physical habit, and then see if there's better ways that you can do it challenge it is it actually true what you're saying figure out some things that you can do to counter it if it is actually true and then what you're going to find is you're going to be able to start to do more stuff this is going to fill you with confidence that's going to give you self-esteem it's going to make you feel better and above all it's going to give you hope and hope is obviously a really important thing when it comes to recovery because the hope that when, when you actually get hope you sort of do the thing of wow it is actually possible you know and that sort of you latch onto that and then you want to find more things that you can do to to really help you along my friends i hope you've learned a little bit and like this video and if you have then consider liking or subscribing or if you don't want to do that that's okay as well and i'll see you all in the next video bye